right, so we've, we've all, I think, uh, appreciate the, the negative sounds that, that we're hearing in the background. Uh, I've shown you this slide before, but often the, the response that we have to, to hypoxemia is to hyperventilate that patient. And part of the reason uh, that that happens is that we don't have the appropriate feedback to respond differently. We understand that it's adrenaline induced and we think if we go harder, faster, as I've said, um, that that's going to improve our, uh, our oxygenation. And that's not uh, the case and in fact we're potentially causing, causing harm. So what we need to do is, is work to, to have appropriate objective feedback for airway management. I think we all have that potentially available to us and we need to increase access to those resources. And I'm going to talk about that a, a little bit more. Now, there's a term that's being used and it's called, called pulse ox lag. And what that really means is that when we monitor somebody's saturations peripherally with our, our, our sat probe, that represents about a 30 to 60 second uh, or longer delay from what is truly happening centrally. Right, so um, when the saturations are falling and you see them on the monitor and, and they're 85, probably centrally they're actually already 60%. And this becomes important not only in the, in the, in the descent, in that uh, you know, something potentially bad is going to happen, but it also is important to understand the implications of this as we, we rescue the patient and re-oxygenate the, uh, the patient. So, and what we, I think, need to move towards to avoid this scenario so we don't hyperventilate our patients and then we properly reoxygenate them is we need to move towards using devices uh, that, are, that are attached to this BVM. So how can we use waveform capnography versus as opposed to saturations for real-time feedback breath-to-breath uh, -breath feedback and airway management. Now this is this is Super BVM and Super BVM it looks like a bird or a plane um, but it's a fully outfitted BVM. And what I mean by fully outfitted is that it has a peep valve attached to it, it's got a pressure manometer attached to it and then between the device and the and the mask it's got a side stream connector for, for, for uh, um, waveform capnography monitoring. And many people say, well, we don't have this. And, and really, it's time to say, okay, you don't have it, but this needs to be a priority for you to push for it, whether this is a, an a ED, a critical care environment, or a pre-hospital environment. I think this is the current standard, and we need this to, I think, improve airway management care and ultimately improve, uh, improve outcomes. And I'll talk about that a, a little bit more. What we need to understand, though, is, is, is how this information appears on the screen and, and what's normal and what's abnormal. And i got to tell you that this is not, not something that's easy to find in the, in the, in the literature. But in general, here's the, the, the two-minute version of that. And this is a nice little correspondence published in Brit British Journal of Anesthesia. And, and it talked about using waveform trace as an objective feedback to, uh, for how you're doing in, in ventilating that patient. Think about it. Right now, all we have is clinical parameters. So I said that pulse ox lag um, is, provide, is an issue because that gives you really a delayed picture as to what's happening centrally. Um, Waveform capnography tells you that you're, you're ventilating your, your patient properly. And if you're ventilating your patient properly, then you're delivering oxygen to the alveoli and the saturations will respond to that just at a, at a, at a, with, with a bit of delay. And let me, let me um, continue to, to dive deeper into this. A, a normal waveform trace has sort of a various phases, but the most important phase is the plateau phase. So the peak or the top portion of the waveform is, is close to being flat. It has a slight ascent to it. Um, and that's what a normal waveform is. And it's numerically, we know it's sort of in the 35 to 40 uh, range from a millimeters of, of mercury point of view. But the shape of it is important as opposed to an abnormal trace which is usually narrower and it has, it has a, a peak that is curved and there is no plateau as you see in B. And that's a, you, we, we are doing, we, there's some ventilation happening, 
but it's inadequate and probably this correlates to to ineffective mass ventilation that we otherwise only have clinical parameters to detect. So clinical parameters to detect poor ventilation is, is poor chest rise, that, that sound of and feel of ineffective mass ventilation. And while an experienced seasoned person can recognize that, um, you know, it, it, it's not such a, an easy thing to, to detect or believe, especially in the face of falling saturations. So B, the only difference between B and C is the is the is the height of the waveform, and and as the height decreases again, it's more of a signal of, of ineffective mass ventilation. And when we see this abnormal trace, that is a trigger that we need to respond differently. So if you're doing one-handed technique, now you're going to move to two-handed technique plus place a an, an oral pharyngeal airway. Um, and again, that gives us objective information that should match the clinical information we have of ineffective mass ventilation. And I'm going to expand on, on why that becomes uh, uh, more important in the next couple slides. So if we, if we look at this, this, is, uh, this graph, if you will, um, this is saturations on the, on the y-axis and, and time on the x-axis. And if we're monitoring peripherally our sats, as we do with a peripheral um, sat probe, you know, our saturations are, are, are going along well and, and, uh, and then all of a sudden we're having difficulty and our sats are falling, right? There's somebody in the room who's calling out the numbers as they, as they fall. We hear that tone, that deafening tone of, of falling saturations. And usually that correlates with ineffective, or will correlate with ineffective mass ventilation. And then we do some sort of corrective maneuvers and, and ultimately our SATs uh, come up. But remember from a pulse ox lag, this is, this is a, a delayed response. So we've already centrally caused some harm, right? Because centrally um, this, this is happening from a breath to breath phenomena and there's just a, there's a delay in terms of our, our detection peripherally. So a saturation that was 85 centrally might correspond to a saturation of 60 or something centri centrally. And then same thing on the, on the rise, what's happening, so we do our corrective maneuvers, centrally things are improving, but peripherally we're still getting feedback that our saturations are continuing to fall. And this is, this is, a, this is a critical point. So we've done a corrective maneuver and, and uh, maneuvers, put in an oral airway, done two-handed technique, and you feel like you're getting good chest rod, but somebody's still counting out the sats as they're falling, right? What do you trust? The objective marker that's on the, uh, on the, on the screen of falling saturations, or do you trust your clinical feedback that, okay, I've got good chest rise? People, I think, will often opt to trusting the SATs and they'll give up on this and then they'll go to something else that they're less experienced with and potential badness can happen. So how can we, how can we address this? Well, it's simple. You just use Super BVM, right? Because with Super BVM, what's happening is that despite the fact that our saturations might be okay, right? Um, they're, they're 98 to 100%. Um, what we notice clinically, hopefully, we detect that, geez, I'm not getting good chest rise, I don't have the feel and the sounds of effective mass ventilation. Um, people might say, okay, we're okay, because they're looking at the SAP monitor and they're still 98%. Well, if you have waveform capnography and you recognize an abnormal trace, you're going to say, no, no, you know, geez, I've got to respond because the waveform is abnormal, right? So you modify your technique uh, um, appropriately. Um, and then, you know, with modification of your, of, of your technique, you're going to hopefully get a nice normal waveform with that plateau that you like to, to see. So despite the fact that your saturations are falling, right, um, and they're, you know, 88, 86, 84, um, you've made corrective uh, maneuvers, and you're looking at the monitor, you see a normal waveform, you can say, I know my sats are falling, you know, there's, this is pulse ox lag, things are going to uh, improve, I've got a good normal trace, and you're going to trust that objective feedback that things are improved, and ultimately, you're going to be rewarded with the saturations on the monitor improving um, as we see recorded uh, peripheral. So, um, this is the reason why I think we need to move to super BVM. We know the value of PEEP. Uh, we've, we've talked about that. We've talked about the risks of aggressive mass ventilation 
in terms of uh, causing gastric insulfation and promoting regurgitation, right? So having a pressure manometer feedback is, is, is very useful. And now, again, I think we need to move away from, you know, capnography is just an after-the-tube kind of thing. It tells us whether we're in the right place or not. And that's absolutely what should be the standard of care. No waveform is no tube, period. Right. That's that that that's the that's uh, the answer that, that that we should trust. Um, but but we need to move away from just this tool being a post tube feedback device to a, a a a device that gives us feedback real time during airway management, pre intubation, and then between intubation temps as we attempt to reoxygenate that patient. I've been in plenty of situations where where I forgot to put on my end title, um, we're rescue ox reoxygenating the patient, and we put on the waveform, and the first time the waveform comes up, and I've got a good trace, but I've got a, a, a CO2 of nine, right? Because I've been aggressively hyperventilating that patient. So the other part about this is not just the waveform, but again the, the numeric endpoint feedback that you get that you are actually hyperventilating that patient allows you to normalize and slow down and give appropriate breaths to reoxygenate that patient. I want to finish by by us appreciating some concepts relating to, to reoxygenation. There's good, good literature to support that if you if you are delivering a high FiO2, right? If you're delivering an FiO2 of 100%, we should be able to, to deliver that uh, for the, the most part. That you're, you, the, you, you, for you to reoxygenate that patient, it'll often take as little as, as five breaths to, to reoxygenate the patient. And, and that's, that's all you need. Anything else beyond that is potentially causing harm because you're not really improving the oxygenation status of that patient. And what you are doing is hyperventilating, dropping the CO2, causing squeeze of the brain and causing secondary injury. And we don't want to do that. This is just a beautiful demonstration um, with using PEEP as an example to say that you, you really don't have to overly uh, ventilate that, that patient to achieve maximum uh, alveolar gas exchange. So what you'll see here is a BVM without a PEEP valve on. You see expanding collapse of the lung, right? And then a PEEP valve placed on. And look at the number of breaths. One, two, three, four breaths really four breaths for, for that lung to become completely expanded. And what's the additional value from a reoxygenation point of view of squeezing that, that bag um, aggressively? Um, but th this is the challenge. So let's say, okay, that was four breaths, but let's say six breaths, right? Six breaths. Our patient saturations were falling and, and you know, we cognitively understand that it only takes six breaths to reoxygenate your patient. One. So what'd you do uh, last night? How was dinner? Life good to you? You have a good summer? Um, two. That was 10 seconds. We're not going to be able to do that. And neither is it is appropriate to do. The message here is not to use six breaths. Probably the message here is that you never need to go over 10 breaths. But the bigger message I want to say is that you don't have to hyperventilate that patient, obviously, to reoxygenate that patient. It causes harm, you know, slow down. And the only real way to do that is if you have appropriate feedback, right? And appropriate feedback means having the equipment available to you with Super BVM um, that uh, has your side stream waveform capnography gives you that kind of feedback.